Hey everyone, and welcome to Skill Capped. We have a really special guide for you today where I, an Immortal 3 player, will be breaking down a smurf game against gold players. Now, don't worry, I won't be relying on just my aim to get kills and carry. This isn't going to be some sort of highlight reel where I can make myself feel better. Instead, the focus will be on strategies, concepts, and mechanics that you too can use to absolutely stomp gold players. Now, what you'll find throughout this guide is that we'll be jumping from my post-game analysis to my in-game live commentary as I played. This will give you unique insights into what I'm thinking about and what my plans are as the game happens. Plus, it lets you know what we teach here at Skillcap actually gets used in real games effectively, and that we aren't just relying on some sort of natural talent and then overanalyzing the game after to make what we teach seem more important than it is. Alright, enough boring explanation, let's jump straight into it, I'm playing Reyna on the map bind in Gold Elo. Let's hear my thoughts from the live commentary on picking Reyna on this map. And we're on the map bind. I've selected Reyna, which is actually pretty good on bind. She has some good uh, flashes. Uh, usually plays B uh, in Hookah on defense, um, similar to how you would play Phoenix, almost identical really, um, with the early flash out, giving you a lot of intel, giving possible flanks and stuff like that, which you'll be seeing. From here, I then talk about what the viable first round buys are and the emergence of a new frenzy strategy on Reyna. On defense, you have a couple of different options actually with uh, Reyna in terms of your early buys. You kind of have some like cheese buys or some like buys that people don't really expect, which is mainly the frenzy buy. So you can actually go frenzy, go one leer, and then double devour. So you have three devours on the pistol round. This can be really strong if you're playing in a close range location, such as hookah. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Whereas instead you could go two devours with a ghost. This is more standard, but I'd like to show the frenzy strat because I think it's uh, quite strong. I also then break down the current meta setup on bind and the reason for it. All right. We're playing the 3B to A setup. Surprisingly, Cypher's playing A site, but that's fine. We have double Sentinels on A. Typically, the meta right now is to play 3 on B since it's harder to retake, and A is just easier to kind of give up and then play the retake on. So I mentioned how the current meta setup is to put 2 on A and 3 on B, and I just wanted to expand on this in a bit more detail. If we take a look at B's site, once the attackers get the plant down, often the A defenders rotate through their spawn and funnel into hulls. From here, they will have a very predictable entrance into B site, where they'll be exposed to a ton of different angles. Or they have to pass the doorway and head into elbow, which takes a ton of time and again can be very predictable. As defenders, if you're losing B site and trying to retake it through this predictable rotate, you'll find the majority of the time you lose the round. Instead, it's important that at least one defender pressures the flanks either at hookah or B long. You can get there by rotating through the teleporter at short A, but it's much safer and less predictable to just push out short A itself and get on the flank that way since you won't make the teleporter sound to notify the enemies that you're actually flanking. So remember to always have one person pressuring the flank in retake scenarios on B site. Now let's compare this to retaking A site as defenders. Sure, we have the predictable rotate through our spawn, but notice how we can either go pipes or A heaven. Suddenly we become less predictable. Additionally, when we actually peak these angles, you'll notice how they're much safer from pipes you have just a few angles to clear before you can start pressuring U-Haul or site itself. Same thing with A Heaven, where we can really control our peaks so that we check each angle one by one. In addition to this, the flank routes are better on A site retake as well. Unlike on B site where taking the teleporter on short A can be very risky, the teleporter from B long is pretty safe as there's not usually an attacker hanging that far back to watch it. This will give you a fast pivot to either short A or showers. The short A flank can be especially devastating due to the lack of good cover the attackers have when watching this angle. And overall, due to A site's layout, there aren't a ton of safe or strong places to play from on A site for attackers once they get the plant down. This is why the meta has evolved into playing 3 on B site, trying to prevent the need for a retake from ever happening, and 2 on A site, where it's okay to lose the site and play for a retake scenario as the defenders. Now, before we head into the first round, remember you can access the full live commentary of this game on our website, skillcap.com, link in the description below. It's there you'll not only find over 700 premium Valorant guides, but we also have up-to-date lineups for your favorite agents, detailed map breakdowns of the best strategies and spots to play, and an expanding library of live smurf commentaries by some of the top Valorant players breaking down how you too can climb out of every rank in Valorant, ranging all the way from Iron to Diamond. All of this can be unlocked with no risk with our rank improvement guarantee, so click the link in the description below, head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Alright, so let's see how I play round 1. 
on there. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna listen. Definitely need to dismiss away. A little risky there on the long peak. But don't really have a choice. You know, I'm actually really liking this with how low I am. Yeah. I was gonna say, just playing up close with the frenzy. So now we got the full heal, and we still have one more heal. So let's go back to the start of this clip, where I start with the standard peak I mentioned earlier out of hookah using my blind. I mentioned I'm going to wait and listen. On there, so I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna listen. The reason for this is that often players will make the mistake of flashing at the very start of the round. This will result in the attackers being near market and cover and being able to run away. By waiting a few seconds and listening for footsteps, we can bait the attackers to push into the open and catch them off guard. I also make sure to place Reyna's Leer up and further to the side of where I'm peeking. This way, if the enemy goes to shoot the eye, they have to adjust their crosshair on both the X and Y axis to aim back on my head. Now, the value of this play isn't just the possibility of getting kills, it's very much also used to gather intel. We killed one enemy and spotted another, so there's a high chance that the enemy is going to attack B site. We can see on the minimap that this early intel lets our cipher know to rotate to B site early on. Additionally, that kill will have caused their push to slow down, since they have to be much more afraid about pushing into hookah, especially being a man down, this buys time for cipher to rotate. I then mention with how low on health I am that I want to move up close. You know, I'm actually really liking this with how low I am. The reason for this is that pistols have a damage drop off at long ranges. By playing up close, I maximize the speed in which I can kill someone, and with how low in health I am, it reduces the chances of them hitting me with a bullet before I kill them. I just want to highlight that at this point, we got two kills and have stalled enough time for our A players to rotate to B site. The enemy team has pretty much zero chance of taking the site at this point, and their best chance of winning would definitely be to rotate off and try to hit the A site. But they don't do that, and so the number advantage becomes overwhelming as we swing with our teammates to trade kill and win the round. Now, let's jump into the live commentary of round two before we break it down into more detail. In your ear. So we have a couple of choices here. Um, one trick is to go three devour, because you get one free around. So, so if we don't use any devours this round, essentially we would have wasted 100 credits and there's probably no way we're actually going to use four devour so often sitting on three devour is like a common strategy you want to do i think i'm gonna full save here just armor with this uh frenzy so it functions similar to okay functions similar to a stinger which is the alternative by reloading we have way too many people here in Hika. I'm gonna rotate. It just seems like since we're not seeing anything, that they're likely A. Also, when we went for that aggro peak, we only saw one person on market. Shit. I have this for info. Same idea here. Alright, let's grab the Sheriff. So you'll notice I used the same blind into peak strategy out of Hookah, but this time the enemy wasn't pushing and instead there was only one of them playing passive in market. The fact that no one was pushing and there was only one player passive in market gives us great early intel. When you combine this intel with the fact that we're not hearing anything near B or that when I jump out of Hookah we don't see anyone B long, it's a safe assumption that the enemy is likely hitting A site so we go for an early rotate based on this prediction. Keep in mind we still have Jet and Brimstone lagging behind on B site and I can turn around if they make contact with an enemy. I'm also watching the minimap as I rotate to see if my A site players spot anyone. Sure enough they do and I know to continue rotating to A. You'll notice here how I used Reyna's Dismiss to scout after the kill on Raze. It's important that when you do this, you don't get caught out by an enemy while you come out of the Dismiss animation, since you'll be an easy kill, as you won't have your gun out. Instead, I use it to check the next angle I'm going to peek. Once that's safe, I cancel Dismiss to get out of it. I then peek, making sure to stay at headshot level with my crosshair, and again, use that same tactic of using Dismiss to scout the next angle I'll have to peek. This dodges the Omen Paranoia, and allows me to get back to safety as the Dismiss expires. The next question is how in the world did I know to peek immediately after to kill Omen? I mean, wouldn't he just be staring right at me considering he just saw me dismiss around the corner a second ago? Here's the thing, when I got back to safety, I checked my minimap and saw that Jet was pushing him. 
This let me know I needed to be ready to swing off Jet's contact so that Omen would be overwhelmed and make for an easy kill. At this point, I just want to quickly highlight just how valuable this peek out of Hookah with a blind can be in terms of both stalling a push and early intel. In round 3, I alt and push out looking for a kill into dismissing back to safety, at which point I gathered enough intel to know they were pushing B. This informed my A players to rotate, and the kill stalls the push to give enough time for the rotate to come through, resulting in a one round. In round 4, I blind out, see no one at all, and with that early intel anticipate an A push and early rotate. That fast rotate from the early intel is what gets us to A site in time to prevent the plant and assist our teammates in the defense. Now let's take a look at what to do when you push out of Hookah, and instead of rotating to A site from the intel, you actually push onto the enemy's flank. I'm gonna ult start of the round. You don't always have to do this, but I'm not being punished for it. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember last time I pushed through. Didn't look at now. Now look, see, see how they're actually pushing into A. So one took this teleporter. Jet's still okay. Jet's gonna go for the teleporter. No, it's not. But I have a nice flank. I'll definitely catch them off guard. I think one's flanking me potentially. Alright, cool. So the reason why I knew someone was flanking me was because he took the teleporter, and if you look at how the, site, the map is structured, whenever you hear an attacker take the teleporter, and then someone's planted here, it's very unlikely they're going to go all the way through spawn and then all the way back there. They almost always go through the teleporter and then run back to, to short A. So that's how I need to expect that. So there are a couple things to break down. First, after I get that kill on Omen, I decided to head towards the cave rather than continuing to push the flank from market. The main idea here is that once I've killed Omen, the entire enemy team is now aware that I'm on the flank, and so someone will likely be waiting and watching for me. This is why I go through caves. I'm trying to force an enemy to waste time watching the previous location while I come from a more unpredictable angle. I also did a useful trick shortly after. I spotted two enemies on the minimap in sight while one took the teleporter. I begin to run to get to the site faster, but as soon as my footstep circle gets in range of where the enemy is, I make sure to walk again. This slight optimization lets me get on the flank that little bit faster, which helps me catch the jet off guard. Next up, I show a strong economic tactic you can use on the last round of a half. Alright, last round, we can buy a gun. We can also do a couple of other things. So, um, for example, I'll buy this. Really, I always do this on the last round if I have enough money. This way, I can take an op shot at the start of the round, and then I have this to fall back to. Since it's the last round, we don't have to worry about economy or anything like that. It's a nice way to just get an early pick at the start of the round. Catch people off guard. Okay, switch to here. Took my goddamn phantom. I'll jump peek this. You always, when you jump peek this, you want to go from side to side. Makes it harder for you to be hit. Alright, switching it to the attacking side, I begin to discuss what pistol buy we should go for, and how it's impacted by what part of the map you're going to attack. Uh, same idea here, right? We go the, with the Frenzy Strat, or we can go Ghost. Um, again, are we fighting from long range or close range? Technically, if someone's hookah, we can catch them with the Frenzy, but then once we get into B-Sight, it can become a bit longer range, which can be more difficult. But um, also, the Frenzy Strat can be a much more of a hard carry kind of style, where since I have three Devours, it allows me to take on many more opponents um, in the pistol round. So if your teammate's going to fail, I can give you the opportunity to really just demolish them. I think I want to say I might want to save my blind for B site, so that way I can get in close and instead just dry peek the hookah angle. Let's get to here. Wait for this to expire, and then we push in. There's definitely someone on the left here. Okay. Waited for a second. If I got shot in the back. Ooh, should have eat. My blind, uh, I think got shot. Also, my teammates weren't watching the angle. Unlucky. Should have devoured in. There's definitely some hints we had there. So, like, for example, uh, Cypher's here, right? 
We saw Omen here, and we saw Jet here, and we killed someone in um, Puka. The likelihood that they would also have someone be long is almost zero. So, because of that, we should have known that either to fall back and go A site, or to devour so that we could push into elbow. But I thought I was safe. But my teammates weren't actually watching. Even the, their, the omen smoke was off, so they could could have sat in window. And when I flashed, I expected them to do that. I expected them to push in and kind of go with me. But instead, they just hid in the smoke. So the pistol round didn't go great. But heading into the next round, you'll notice that I call for my team to do what's called a force buy. Let's a uh, force buy here. Definitely want to force buy. Hundred percent. So why is this? Well, in the current meta, force buying usually means going for full armor and a stinger, as it's only 2,000 credits, and at close ranges, the stinger can be just as effective as a rifle. However, you'll notice when we check my teammate's economy, only Brimstone and I have 2,000 credits, enough to buy the stinger and full armor combo. For this reason, you would actually usually want to save on this round, so you'd have rifle and full armor on round 3. So why was I so confident to tell my teammates to force buy? Well, it all has to do with the lead we have heading into this round. It's 11 rounds to 2. If we force buy here and win, we'll be at 12 rounds, only one off the win, and the enemy team's economy should be damaged enough that they won't be able to full buy into that final round. On top of all of this, how many rounds you win by will influence how much rank you gain. So with such a large lead, it's worth it to force buy and go for that 13-1 victory for a massive rank gain. Worst case scenario, if we lose the round, we'll just make sure to save and then full buy on the round after. I dropped the bomb, so that way I can play more aggressive. Does anyone want to trade with me in Fuka? I'm going to go aggro with the Stinger. It's perfectly fine. Don't be worried. Yeah, it's right here. I don't think I need to ult here. It is a 3v2, so I might. You know Cypher rotated fat. Yeah, he's in sight. Okay, definitely ult him. Just gotta be sure. Try and go for the plant. I don't know if I got it off. Hey, an extra 300 credits for everyone. Now, one thing I did want to highlight was how I knew Jet was B-long in that clip. You'll notice I killed two people in Hookah, so at most there should be one person left on B, as it's standard to play three on B site as mentioned earlier. I use my dismiss to scout B site and don't spot anyone. Then, when I check my minimap, I notice that none of our teammates pushed B long. If you attack B site from Hookah and never sent teammates B long, you have to be cautious of being shot from behind when entering site, as there could be an enemy lurking B long still. It's this combination of getting two kills in Hookah, using Dismiss to check into sight, and having no teammates going B-Long that caused me to be cautious and make sure to check B-Long for an enemy. Sure enough, winning this force by round damaged the enemy's economy and set us up for the win on the following final round. Alright, and remember, if you want to unlock the full commentary of the game, along with other smurf commentaries in every rank, on every map, and with every agent, check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, you know the deal, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to show your support and let us know you want to see more guides on this channel like this one. Also, leave a comment and let us know what agent, map, or rank you'd like to see a smurf commentary done on next, as we read all the comments you leave and are always looking for feedback. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.